All right. Well, welcome everyone. This is really the first episode of who knows how many of, um, I guess, podcast episodes for the possible futures, which is a newsletter exploring the intersection of technology, design and ethics. And I'm Clayton Dewey, and I am here with Pablo Ruiz Muthkeith, who is uh, CEO and uh, founder, well, co-founder of Kaleidos, Taiga and Penpot. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me, Clayton. It's a pleasure. Yeah, and so um, I reached out to you because I had uh, recently learned about Penpot. Mm -hmm. which is an excellent, excellent um, uh, design tool. Uh, it's similar if, if people are familiar with things like Figma and Sketch and, and I guess before that even Photoshop, but I think Figma and Sketch were big um, arrivals to the design scene because of their ease of use. And I'm a user experience designer and so, uh, a, a big part of my work is putting together wireframes and um, until until Figma and Sketch came along, it was either something very heavy handed uh, like Photoshop or GIMP um, or something very felt very kind of rudimentary um, like balsamic or something that's very specific to wireframing, but maybe not great at, um, I don't know, just having a little bit more control over the design. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I, I'm a big advocate of free software and open source software and had always been sort of eyeing different projects that seemed like they might serve a similar, um, purpose and address a similar problem as, as something like Figma might, but nothing was really out there that met my need until Penpot came along and um, so anyway, I guess I explained it a little bit, but do you want to explain to the listeners in your own words a bit more about what, what PenPod is? Sure. Well, I think a bit of context here is, uh, is interesting because PenPod is not something that spontaneously just, um, came to be, mm -hmm. um, PenPod is a design tool, is a design and prototyping tool, as you mentioned, um, competes against yeah, Figma, Sketch, uh, Envision, uh, Adobe XD, you know, Victorial. It's, it's a bit more Victorial. Not so much Photoshop, I think. Yeah. Although I'm not an expert on, on Bitmap, but um, I think there are, there are two somehow, you know, you, you, could, you could say that two separate categories, right? So we are in the Victorial prototype um, arena, right, on the, the uh, Bitmap raster uh, image. And... Um, I'm saying this is not like spontaneously, like or, or even a pet project by some 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 people in a garage or anything. This comes from a company called Kaleidos, which you mentioned. I'm CEO of uh, that company, ten years old, that was created to do some experiments around uh, IT and partnering with uh, startups or big corporations that would need it. You know that that super great talented team and develop their projects, not our projects, but theirs, right? Um, and at the same time, we want to incubate our own ideas. We, want, we wanted to say, okay, we are all about open source and free software. Actually, Kaleidos, the, the whole name is uh, Kaleidos Open Source. So that's something. And um, we wanted to make sure that we had this hybrid mode where we would create software for the people and you know, uh, be happy with them, uh, for them, for the future and you know, their businesses on the internet or whatever. And, but also at the same time, protect quality time to develop our own stuff. And Penpot is just one of those products. And the reason Penpot does exist is because at some point, I think six years ago, six, seven years ago, uh, Kaleidos, which was very dev, dev, developer-centric uh, company, uh, and we didn't have UX UI in-house, um, saw the potential for multi-functional teams, like cross-domain teams, where would, you would have design, UX UI, design in general, and um and code together working together right uh but we needed to use open source because that's that's our, our ethos uh Kaleidos open source will use open source as an end in itself but also as a means to an end and we started creating taiga which is a project management platform 
uh, we're all about processes, you know, and how to do stuff, not just what, but how we achieve things and team management and all that. So we created Tiger. We were happy with that. And to have that agile mindset uh, built in a tool for teams like ourselves. But as you can imagine, at some point, designers at Kaleidos, they were super pro open source, but they, they said, look, we are not first class citizens in open source. <laughs> Let's yeah. face it, you know. Yeah. Um, we, are, we are happy with Inkscape, we are happy with Game, we are happy with uh, some tools, but you guys, you developers, you have everything to choose from, you know, mm -hmm. and you can choose the best of the best. Uh, you live in this paradise world where you, <laughs> you, 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 you don't know how privileged you are. Yeah. Really. And so we agree with you, you know, we, we are all about, you know, we, we all in open source, absolutely. But you have to understand that we are frustrated with the professional quality of some tools, you know, to achieve parity with, with you, you developers, you know, and we're capable of more. Uh, tools are tools. We all get that, you know. But still, it's a productivity thing, you know, that helps, right? Yeah. And, and so we, we, we came to this uh, point where designers asked the company, the company meaning their peers, because it's an employee-owned company, um, look, could we make an exception? Could we make an exception and use Figma? Uh, for us to have a professional quality, you know, design tool. And we said, oh no, we knew this was coming. <laughs> no, this, 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 is, this is terrible news. <laughs> we understand where you're coming from. We, we, you know, empathy and all that, of course. And yeah. we, we understand your frustration. Is there anything else we could do? And and they said, well, we actually tried to make some UI revamp on Inkscape. Uh, it's a project called Rethinkscape. Uh, but it's, you know, it, it, we don't own that project. You know, that's, it's Inkscape uh, guys that know what they, is best for the tool. So we cannot um, trust that at some point they will, you know, use our feedback. It's not just feedback, it was a lot of work, but you know, like sure. it's yeah. input. So, so no, sorry, but there's nothing you can do. It's Figma or, or frustration. And so we said, okay, we're going to make that as an exception to the rule of using only open source tools, but we're going to develop the Figma killer. Um, as a, as a, a, no, it's a no, compromise, <laughs> it's a nice compromise. It's like, okay, we will we, we'll allow ourselves to accept that Figma has to, to be here, but we might have the ability, the talent, the creativity, and, uh, you know, the mindset and, and the ambition to create an open source Figma killer. And I, we, we typically say Figma killer and not sketch killer and not envision killer. People listening to the to the podcast could say, "Why are not? Why aren't you saying that?" It's like it's just a shortcut. You know, Figma is the leader. Yeah. Yeah. You go if you aim at Figma, you're basically aiming at the leader, and so you you are doing the collateral effect is also that you are uh, um, you could be better than Sketch and better than Vision. So that's why we just there's a nice shortcut for us. Mm -hmm. Now. It's easier. It's very easy to say, "Oh, yes, let's let's develop an open source Figma killer." Right? Mm -hmm. It's very easy to say that. Well, fortunately, at Calidus, we have the talent. You know, we have because this is not your typical tool to develop. So when people think of Pempot, they have to understand that you have to, these days for Pempot to be successful, you would have to develop a web-based platform. So it's browser. Um, first, mm -hmm. and so the technology that you, you have to use is what browser allows you to use. Super efficient, like in terms of performance, has to be the slickest UI you can imagine. Because designers, you're a designer yourself, you need to have immediate feedback and response in your micro interactions with a design tool. Yes, and has to be very, very. Um, bug free <laughs> like you cannot accept mm, 
small errors or you know margin errors or uh, rotations that are not mathematically perfect you know mm -hmm. so you have all these challenges and of course online single tennis collaboration so you know people just joining together to uh, design at the same time from different browsers different locations in the world right and that has to work flawlessly if it doesn't work flawlessly it doesn't work at all it's great to have a tool just for yourself but the magic happens when you have this collaboration scheme when people can join not only asynchronously but actually synchronously mm -hmm. um, and we, we we released that to the world uh, last february on alpha and and i think it was about time you know um that we that, that people could enjoy something like penpot yeah um, well and it was it was really well received i, I remember going and seeing the product hunt page and yeah. it's glowing reviews i checked it out i was so impressed that i made just a little you know um first reaction video because it's like oh wow people are really talking this up which i was glad because i got the genuine yeah I reaction that video. of like yes yeah, this we is... saw it. yeah that was great that was like oh that's a very <laughs> very nice very cute <laughs> uh, first impressions for a reaction. If it's very honest, and and uh, and and the team was was watching it like oh, mm -hmm, taking notes. Okay, so that's okay. Uh, that's good feedback. Oh, uh, he doesn't see this. Okay, but that's made makes sense. Uh, that was very that, that that was that was good. And not only you, but a lot of people were um, sharing their impressions. You know, first impressions. And uh, and I have a lot to say about those first impressions. But you know, in due time, when 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 you feel it's it's fine. But yeah, uh, only a few months uh, in the wild. Yeah, yeah, and it's. Um, I mean, one of the first things I did after I I checked it out and was like, okay, this is uh, this is actually the real deal. This is this is quite polished for an initial release for an alpha release. Um, uh, I was like, I always I always get curious. I'm like, how how do, how is this possible? I, I don't see a, a pricing page anywhere yet. Um, hmm. and, and with open source tools, you know, um, it, especially if you're using them professionally, um, it's one thing to check out, uh, someone's pet project and be like, wow, that's impressive. You, you really put a lot into that. That's excellent. Um, it's another to then commit to it and say, yeah. does this have the longevity and stability that I can rely on this for, for my work? Um, and so that's when I learned about Kaleidos and the the incubator program and thought, wow, this is, this is, like you said, there's a whole backstory to this project and a lot of thought that goes into uh, incubating it and, and sustaining it. Um, so I'd love to kind of dive in a little bit deeper into that aspect of it. Yeah. So the, the impression that I get is that uh, Kaleidos um, is for hire and builds out um, apps and, and maybe websites and web apps for other companies. Um, maybe I think uh, I see you've worked in the health space. It sounds like you've actually worked in a lot of different industries. Um, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think, I think that is the thing from the past now. Mm -hmm. uh, but so what you say is absolutely true until last month <laughs> uh, what I'm saying here is that yeah a little trick was we would divert revenue you know profit from this hire you know uh, team for hire mm -hmm. uh, for really very how can I say this and not sound like uh, uh, bad but i mean super big project right so mm -hmm. it, we would be asked for, you know by 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 startups with a lot of money and great ideas but no team to be their team for a couple of years and uh, so we would accept if the technology was challenging if the business was aligned with our ethos and it was a big project like it was, and it, it was going to be core to our clients uh world view right yeah so what we would do is we we were not cheap not super expensive but you know cheap and what we would do is okay instead of uh 
uh, distributing profits like um, around, you know, among us, we were going to do is to put that money into having teams devoted to our own things, to our own products. Mm -hmm. So that worked okay for some years and Pimport got that um, sustainability with that hybrid mode. But eventually both Taiga and Pimport have asked, you know, you can, you can feel like they asked to, um, to receive full attention. And to receive full attention, that means we need to say no to uh, external clients. So that hiring thing is over. Mm -hmm. And so where was the, the money coming from? Well, our own savings, uh, some uh, business annuals, and some, some seed VCs that trust, trust us, that you know, support us, and monetization strategies from Taiga that are working for several years now. Taiga is, mm -hmm. you know, we, 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 we get money from people paying for uh, services for, for Taiga. And so we have uh, all the resources, both, you know, monetary and in terms of talent that we need to be fully focused on, on Taiga and Penport for the next years. And, um, and we were very excited that we could make that transition uh, swiftly uh, this year. So Kaleidos.net, if you go now to the website, you won't see many traces of the old Kaleidos where you could actually contact us and see if we could accept your project. It's yeah. now all about Tiger and Fanpoint, you know. Okay, it's thank you. I thought I was losing my mind because no, no, I no, was no. like, where are all the big names yeah. I remember seeing on the website? <laughs> so that explains all these it. machine <laughs> learning projects, you know, <laughs> yeah. e-health, massive stuff. Yeah. Yeah, all those, that, that portfolio, and we, we're very proud of it, but it doesn't make sense to show it like, who would care about that when we are focusing on our products? Yeah. So it's something that we keep and we will keep and we will, you know, it's a pedigree in a way, but this, we, we just, I uh, think uh, a month ago, we just uh, shut it down. You know, everything that was related to, to the, uh, we call the old Kaleidos and it's all about uh, our incubation process. It doesn't stop. It won't stop with Taiga and Penpot, mm -hmm. but it's uh, now it's hundred percent Taiga and Penpot. So uh, we're very excited about this because it's, uh, you know, just giving ourselves the opportunity to uh, make a big impact using open source um, in technology and society in something that um, is targeted to, to technology teams, where for us, the team means design and code. You know, we don't, we cannot see them separate any longer. We believe in mixing uh, code and design, you know, engineering and creativity and uh, working together to, to, to create great stuff. And we think that if you don't have access to great open source tools to do that, mm, the technology that is going to be created, the products that are created will be limited to what people, you know, certain um, sectors of society that can afford uh, paying stuff, you know, mm -hmm. to design, you know, and so we are we are against that. I mean, we are okay with people paying whatever they want to pay, but we are more okay with allowing people to enjoy uh, professional tools um, that give them everything they need to create their stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now we have to be sustainable. You know, we cannot just do this. Um, with our savings, you know, month after month. Mm -hmm. And for that, we have uh, business models that we are um, identifying and, and analyzing for the future, of course, you know. Uh, there's nothing that there's the if you remember when we launched Pempot, if you were there with Product Hunt, also Hacker News, uh, it was a uh, big, you know, great feedback, no haters, amazing. <laughs> uh, people were saying, who who could prove me, who could guarantee that this is not a trap, you know, that this is not a smart move from a commercial proprietary software company that is using open source to lure us into their, you know, uh, plans um, and then make it closed, right? 
Uh -huh. And it was great because and you, you you read that and you say that makes a lot of sense, you know. If 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 I were to be uh, uh, that type of business guy, <laughs> uh, I would this could be a plan. It would make sense. It's plausible. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit conspiratorial, but I, mean, it, I, I think um, it, it it could it could happen. It's a bit. It's, or it's so I think uh, it's yeah, the first it's the first in open source in terms yeah. of design, and and the market is very uh you know um exciting uh and you know figma has been valued in nine billion dollars uh, a month ago so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I understand people would see this from that particular uh angle but yeah. then the community would reply yeah but this is this, these are the guys that developed tiger right yeah five years ago and do you see any suspicious moves no <laughs> so you know this is trust they can be trusted, you know, they, they've done it before. There's no, there's no hidden uh, traps here. Uh, and, and we were glad to, to see that, like, we got credit from our past actions. Um, and so, yeah, so yeah, there's no trap. <laughs> it's just yeah. people trying to make sure that design and open source are finally together for the next decade. Yeah, yeah. Well, and congratulations on that shift for the business. I mean, that's a big deal. It's and a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if people are passionate about the projects that you all have been incubating, then um, it's hard. It's hard to balance both of those when you're doing a uh, for hire model and then trying to protect other, you know, company time to work on essentially pet projects and it that's really I, so i'm most active in the in the drupal world and mm -hmm. there's the that that is kind of common right it's um you um you have kind of what, what google popularized like the 10 percent time or the 15 percent time to to do what you yeah. like and oftentimes people use that to contribute back to open source but it, that, it's always the first thing to go as soon as the, the there's a client priority, which of course is, makes sense. You're being paid to deliver for the client. Um, we had a hack yeah. for that because th that ten percent Google thing, it was it was there back uh, ten years ago when we created Kaleidos, and mm -hmm. we wanted to be to be innovative, right? And we wanted to have quality time to just explore and be creative and all that. And so people would tell us do the 10 percent do the google 10 percent mm -hmm. and we said i don't think that's going to work because if you do not if you cannot commit uh if you cannot plan that time and you cannot do that with peers that also decide that to, to share that their 10 percent at the same time as your 10 percent most probably this is going to be quite individual individualistic uh, efforts right yeah and and the scale of what you can achieve is going to be rather small google has immense resources so anything small you just get gets multiplied by orders of magnitude mm -hmm. but for a company of 15 people you need everyone on board so what we said is no to google 10 percent and we created our pi weeks and so our pi weeks are personal innovation weeks every july and every december the company would stop its uh, daily work for clients. Yeah, those projects. Mm -hmm. We would still get paid uh, because it, because smart clients understand there's a lot of value in that. And we would just everyone at the same time would um, uh, suggest projects and work together for the whole week, like a hackathon, right? But no prices, no context, no rules, mm -hmm. well, just two rules, use open source and be ready to show something functional by Friday, right? Those, those simple two rules. By yeah. doing that, we shifted from that 10% um, individualistic approach to a team effort. And guess what? Penpod, Tiger, and 200 other projects were born in our now 20 pie weeks. Wow. Nice. Well, and that's such a great team building 
opportunity too, right? Compared to what you were saying before of, yeah, I mean, and that's, that's oftentimes what I'll do, right? I'll just kind of, uh, I'll tinker around usually on my own help with a certain issue in an issue queue, but working collaboratively on a project for a week with your coworkers. I well, mean, you, yeah, I can tell you yeah. the, the, this past Pi week, just to give you an example, I, on purpose looked for people I would I, I'm not working on a daily basis like I'm not having uh, interactions you know uh, every day um, and we created this uh, exquisite uh, corpse project <laughs> uh, but instead of literature you know short tales it was about drawings mm -hmm. so we created this um, canvas collaborative canvas where you get just a, a few pixels from the you know the, the, the bottom layer the bottom part from the from the previous drawing and you continue and then uh, someone continues your drawing and then you put everything together and just surreal creativity yes yeah, like <laughs> wow this is amazing and that could happen probably because we uh, that was that very intense week and we shared the processes and ethos even if we didn't work together every day we knew that we were compatible in terms of interfaces, like human interfaces, right? Mm -hmm. And now we got eight projects like that one, you know. And again, people don't have to look at this as the incubation process, like oh, so then that is potentially another product you're going to launch. No, no, you know, Pempod was one of them, but this could just be a pet project, you know, just for fun. Yeah, you know, who knows? You know, it could evolve in, in other stuff or a plugin for. Pinpoint, I don't know. Yeah, it could be a plugin for Pinpoint in the future, but we don't do that. We don't go for, uh, to the Pi Week with uh, any objective uh, other than having fun, experiment, and learn together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you get things like Pinpoint. But again, Pinpoint, you cannot just say, I'm going to develop a tool like this and just and do it. No surprise, there are only a handful of tools. Uh, that type you know you get thousands of e-commerce sites even tens of project management tools but you only get half a dozen design tools and that's for a reason mm -hmm. yeah yeah and so um i'm curious i guess about pen pot in particular mm -hmm. uh so the the issue for possible futures that we're working on that this um, this episode will be a part of is the question of funding. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to feature a, a great interview that happened on the podcast Changelog about Open Collective and how that's mm -hmm. helped mm -hmm. sustainability of open source projects. And then um, there's the critique um, uh, penned by Jeffrey Zeldman called "Nothing Fails Like Success." I don't know if you've if you've read that piece. Yep, it's, not that one. Not that piece. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, he makes a good point that I think a lot of us in the industry are now familiar with because it's so front and center, which is um, the trap of um, when a company takes on so much VC funding that they they then <laughs> they have to pay that back and they have to pay that back big time, and so yeah, yeah, platforms time. like YouTube. Um, well, I guess they're a little different, but any in terms of their circumstances, but it's the same principle of we need to generate so much revenue that we're um, doing very unsavory things in terms of our business model to scale to that level and keep people's eyeballs, even if it means uh, promoting hate speech and fueling people's uh, outrage algorithm and whatnot. And and so Part of what I would wanted to discuss on uh, with you is that it doesn't have to be that way. And sort of, what are some other more ethical alternatives for starting a business and growing it and and making it sustainable, but in a way that maintains those core values? Um, and so, I you, think you, that's a great yeah. question. Yeah. So uh, at Kaleidos, um, in our in our you know, since we, we were created and we, we very quickly came to the conclusion that we were privileged, that we were born in financial crisis here in Spain, mm -hmm. uh, 2011. 
in a harsh year, but we could uh, take risks. Why? Because yeah, privilege. Basically, we would not have any issues finding jobs and you know, payrolls and all that. So we said, okay, let's use that privilege for good. You know, let's use it to make sure that we don't have to make compromises we don't like. Uh, that we don't have to negotiate uh, and and always like fall back, like say okay, and then you know like concede little by little, uh, just because it's it's money or it's uh, whatever exposure or whatever, right? And yeah. so we had this ethical committee that would evaluate potential projects. So back then we we had this very clear stance on we have a lot of talent. We are not going to put this talent so that people that we are not aligned with in terms of who benefits, who gets benefit, you know, if they succeed, if we're not aligned with that, like we would think, okay, this is a client, they're going to develop this. They are, they are asking us to develop this product is very, you know, challenging and all that. And this is, this is something that could perhaps not be possible to develop. So that's great. Two years, amazing stuff, a lot of money, you know, great. But do we really want this product to exist, right? Mm -hmm. so, so when it comes to this shift, you said this is a big deal. It is a big deal because we also need to keep that ethos, you know? Uh, we need to recognize ourselves. We need to see that we are the same, the same team, the same people, uh, yeah, getting some, some uh, investment, but knowing who is actually supporting the project We've got a lot of VCs, but a lot of VCs interested in, in Kaleidos. And mm -hmm. we have picked, you know, the one that we liked that was aligned with open source and our values and the type of team we are. So, uh, and, and, and we have a great deal, you know, but if you only want VCs for the money, you have to, re <laughs> to, to be ready for those VCs or those investors to be there only for the money back, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, don't fool yourself. If you only want the money, ex expect to be asked just the money, right? Uh, and right. so it is, there are ways to ask for just the amount of money you need to prove something. And what we need to prove here is not that we can raise a lot of money, the point here is that we can make this uh, this business sustainable, that people can trust that this is going to be uh, scalable, that this is going to be continue and continue to be developed, adding new features that they can contribute. This is a really global product. You mentioned Penpot, but same with Taiga. Mm -hmm. And we don't need any more money that is uh, asked for proof that point. So no bullshit. Uh, if you go and ask for more money that you don't really need or that is intended to just go for the next round, for the next VC round, and this is about a speculation, you are in a different business. You're, you are in a round-driven <laughs> business model, okay? Mm -hmm. But the team behind Kaleidos doesn't, it might sound a bit weird, but it's like, we are not here for the money. We are here for the impact. You know, yeah. we, we like to be to be right, uh, you, you, we like to make a point and be right about it. This re it's, that's really exciting, right? When you, you, you people, um, you say something that you believe, you have a strong opinion and people follow you and you think that by doing that, uh, you're creating a better world, right? And technology is so, so important for that. And you, so, yeah. and, and that this, and this, is, this is fundamental for us. And this was asked, a dozen times internally before the shift. You know, are, do we understand uh, this next move and what entails? Because in the past we would say no to certain things. We are going to keep saying no to perhaps other bunch of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it's um, well for one. I just want to say it. It it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, that that people would and that you all collectively decided on a path that's more focused around impact than just making a, a ton of money 
Um, I've certainly made those decisions a few times now in my career <laughs> where it was like uh, knowing that I would take a bit of a, a pay cut, not too much, but enough that, for example, to join a worker owner cooperative or to work with more clients that I was aligned with or work with a smaller team where I felt like I had more agency. And, um, and, and we actually see that, you know, the, it's, it's a competitive, it's competitive for the worker in the tech industry in a lot of, um, areas. And that's one thing I, I keep seeing in kind of small business owner circles is communicate your values and communicate the impact that you, that you want to have, because that is one of the prevailing um, reasons that people choose one company over another to work at. Um, yeah, and, that, and that means being very transparent about your decisions mm -hmm. and your decision-making process, um, allowing yourself to make mistakes, you know, always trying to be like <laughs> full approval. Um, I've been, I've been asked by VCs. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. But do you want to become rich or not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is this is like serious questions by VCs. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and he's like, well, no. I mean, life is short. You know, let's just have fun. You know, a bit of money is okay, but beyond certain point. And he's like, okay, you, we're not interested then in investing because if you don't want to become rich, we don't think you have the ambition. Your, your the stakes for you are not that big forum are worldview, of course, from mm -hmm. VC's worldview. Mm -hmm. Only founders wanting to become rich, they believe, are the ones that are going to make the business successful. Uh, that's their pattern matching um, yeah. that they have. It's a, it's a good screening question for them and for you, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I mean, yeah, go, go ahead and ask that question. <laughs> yeah. uh, instead of 20 minutes, we'll just spend five. Um, because no, I mean, and and fortunately, more and more of those questions are not being asked. Um, still, um, this is very Silicon Valley um, type of question, mm -hmm. but not only Silicon Valley uh, in Europe, you get that question too. Uh, but I think more and more VCs and private investors are looking at the team and how cohesive the team is, how, how they work together, their values and their ambitions as a collective. You know, the founders are great. Yeah, founders are important because they sometimes serve as some sort of leadership or whatever. Um, but I think fortunately they're looking more at uh, how to scale up a company and not um, just fail at keeping the ethos and the culture that was there at the beginning, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because that's a, that's a big challenge. That has, is, is our big challenge, not becoming like rich or anything. Right, yeah. Well, that's great to hear. And it's, I mean, it's encouraging to see more, um, more traction being gained in the sort of the ethical investment space and striking a balance between, you know, being able to, to raise capital to, to see a, a project idea and into fruition. Um, but in a way that, like you said, that's sustainable where, um, you're not then obligated to earning profits back 10x, 100x at the expense of users, for example. Um, and yeah, I think movements like um, rather than unicorns, right? Zebras United is a really excellent um, initiative. And um, maybe like uh, after the show, if you have any resources on um, groups, um, funds, whatnot, that, that you all found helpful in that, that journey that you've been on, um, then I think others would find that valuable. Well, uh, I would have find that uh, valuable, but there's there's nothing like that. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's not a structured database uh, filter segmented for that. 
it's very it's a lot of hit and miss and very mm-hmm. anecdotal evidence and, and yeah word luck of mouth. or chance mm-hmm. but one thing i want to stress here is that we want to win this so um one thing is not wanting to personally have any excitement about becoming rich or anything like some vcs are expecting you to to do but it but that doesn't mean you don't want to win like you don't we want open source to rule design <clears throat> design mm-hmm. arena like we want to really go after all the major players uh we are ready to leave a lot of money on the table you know in the process we are we don't have an issue with that at all but we have big ambitions we're not here to be like a third category player or anything like that we want we want we, we dream big you know yeah um so which is a good segue because i wanted to circle back to the the design and open source space yeah um because that was actually our previous issue of possible futures was all on this the state of open source and there were two major interesting tendencies that are being grappled with um, one is governance and funding and how thing how, how decisions are made and then the other is how to how to better collaborate um, between designers and developers and like you said um, shifting so that designers aren't second class citizens in the open source world and like you said, the tools that we have is one one uh, key component to that. So I'm curious, you know, um, PenPod is already quickly reaching a lot of feature parity with something like Figma. Yeah. I'm curious, though, what what are some things that you see um, Fig, Figma and other proprietary design tools unable to do that that you see PenPod being able to do? that they are not able to do that we can do yeah just by the very nature of okay. being proprietary and it can be very practical things or it can be more process or philosophical um, aspects of of this kind of work well many things uh, many things uh the most obvious one is that and it's philosophical but it has to be it has to do with open source and open standards is that we use svg mm-hmm. as a native format we have zero interest in proprietary format uh with penpot um we we know svg has a enormous potential uh it can can't do everything but whatever that we inject there uh, basically html uh, for text, text management is, is the, the, the sole thing that SVG handles uh, differently as what you would expect a design tool to, to behave like. Mm-hmm. Um, we want to make sure that everything, uh, the data formats and data inter- interoperability is 100% future-proof, right? Um, non-open source tools neglect that on purpose. Uh, they have this vendor locking strategy where formats, uh, yeah, you can export to SVG, you can import from uh, SVG, but there's loss in translation every single time. Uh, Pemper doesn't have any loss in translation because you export SVG, which is the native format for mm-hmm. Pemper, right? Yeah. And that means that when designers communicate with developers, the design is already considered the code. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we are in this position where a designer for the first time can consider themselves coders. Like they can go to the repository, the Git repository, which is the golden standards these days for where, where the source of truth remains, right, for a project. And um, indirectly through Pemport or whatever the means, they know that their design is first class citizen uh, input to the repository because you could connect Pemport to your Git repository Mm -hmm. and developers could just take it, use it, transform it without the fear, the constant fear from the designer that something might not quite, might not be quite right in that translation because there's no translation. Right. So I think when that is, 
you could do that without being open source, right? I mean, but and that's that certainly might... what the that's certainly what the aspiration is, right? Is you, you you open up a sketch file or a Figma file and, and you and you see the the you see the CSS generated there, you see the exact colors and but I think you're right. There's always um, well by adopting open standards and and using things like SVG, you are getting closer and closer to uh, a single source of truth that everyone exactly. is working from. Just just yeah. picture this: a designer, uh, you know, considers that a certain product uh, design or whatever is is okay, is finished, and they click on commit on Pempot commit push right to the mm -hmm. repo and that just um the the ripple effect of that is that it goes into production with no human intervention because it's code it's valid code you know um it's not just that you get the properties on a sidebar it is that your design is code it's valid code uh so that's one thing mm -hmm. and that means tighter integration between designing code and 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 that creates a, a, a more fruitful conversation between designers and developers because the developer then sees value in, in being welcome to the design process because the design process will happen in Pempot most of the time. I mean, the design process is bigger than Pempot, but Pempot enables it. And the developer will see themselves as, uh, I, I'm welcome here because this is code, right? And mm -hmm. when you narrow that gap between design and code, magic happens. You know, people know that. Uh, you know, you have you have more uh, functional uh, conversations going on, right? Yeah. Um, so, but of course, being open source gives you uh, the innovation that comes from the from from the community. Innovation gives you uh, global reach. Uh, sorry, uh, open source gives you global reach. Um, uh, plugins, um, you know, the, the, the architecture that Figma had for plugins initially backfired because it was not meant to be open to other people to tinker with, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think now they're sorted out, sort, sorted out but by now, but, but Pempod has been, uh, has been given birth with the idea that other people will be able to create on top of Pempod. So this contribution framework is important. So we should be able to see Pempot grow in unexpected ways um, just for people to, to enjoy their particular view of what a design tool has to be. Now, Pempot also gives you, by its open source nature, uh, you can run it on your server. Wow, you know, groundbreaking yeah. uh, stuff. It, you know, you cannot do that. Uh, with any other tool, you can have it as a desktop native thing like Sketch, mm -hmm. if you use a Mac, of course. But Pempot allows you to run your own uh, design um, Pempot server, whatever, you know, and integrate it yourself. Yeah. Which is one of the last few remnants of core tools in terms of productivity for, te for teams that was not allowed to, to be in your private cloud. Like, no, this is, has to be SaaS. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's no longer true with Pempot. You can have it alongside all the tools that you're using. You have full control and design. Design material sometimes is delicate. You know, you you have to keep it. Yeah. For yourself. For sure. And you might want to integrate it with your crazy ideas about processing or whatever. So, uh, of course, you can run it on your laptop and have a solo experience like a client server. And we will eventually have. Dex native desktop experience just by bundling this with probably Electron framework, but but that's great and that serves some use cases, a bit corner use cases, but useful nonetheless. But having your own server for the first time opens up a lot of possibilities. So I think open source here is is a fresh, uh, it's very it's very it's very new to the design uh, arena, which has evolved slowly for the past twenty years. Um, because open source was not there, collaborative work was not there. I mean, in terms of contribution, and I think, I think it's great that we have at least one good example of uh, a design tool that can scale up and and be for everyone, not just for technical people. 
Yeah. Well, and it serves as a really great, um, what would the word be? Well, an example really of what can happen when, um, when you create a team of designers and developers that are all equally respected and in each person's discipline is, is valued and see the result you, you, you get a tool that is just really fun to work with and really effective. And, you know, I think there's, I think a lot of people in the open source world are, are at that point philosophically understanding the value of design, but I think, I think, I think it, putting it into practice is difficult still for many. When you go to um, events, uh, open source events uh, like FOSDEM and, and others, you see the uh, open source design track and others, and you see designers struggling with how to contribute to, <laughs> yeah. to open source products, you know, and there's uh, tips and tricks and all that. The, the best approach here, the, 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 the neat shortcut is not designers to struggle, uh, to find ways, but to, uh, developers to actually be very welcoming and respecting that work. Um, that's, that's super fast in, into that success uh, path. That's what, what happened at Kaleidos uh, six, seven years ago. We decided that to take that leap of faith, allowing alien people like designers, <laughs> weird, uh, with, with their very fashionable Mind, mindsets and all that because it's all about fashion it's all about trending things and all that and we are developing like solid uh sustainable backend architectures and all that and and i mean this is this, this is not how we thought about it but you could picture it like in a very, very comical way and like this like who are these guys who you know these people that um belong to this other type of breed right mm -hmm. and we said, let's see what happens. And it was an immediate success because we res we welcomed them, we, we, we looked for them, we respected them, and we gave them ownership, agency, and and, and listened, you know, and, and, and in a way obeyed uh, when when it was important to do. Like, yeah, you you are the one that knows what, what to do, right? From that realization comes Penpot. Like we like mm -hmm. to be in that type of team. We want other teams to have it. And we're here to help those teams. And sometimes tools help, you know. To, yeah. uh, and so Kaleidos is, is, we experimented the joy of having code and design together, but for real, not subordinated, you know, yeah. uh, like a feudal system or where <laughs> developers are still on the top, you know, in the hierarchy. Um, yeah, well, and it seemed like uh, because of Penpot came out of one of the Pi Weeks, well, yeah. and, and I guess designers planting the seed a little bit beforehand, right? Good morning. Yeah. yeah. And, and when you start a project with designers as co-participants and co-leaders from the beginning, that's also, that also looks very different than what I think is still still happens oftentimes, which is um well let's invite a designer in to design us a logo or let's we need a invite logo, yeah. a need designer a logo. to <laughs> yeah to update our our interface but the design process goes so much deeper than that and so i think a lot of times designers want to be um involved understandably so kind of from the ground up of like okay well back up you want me to help you redesign this user interface who are your users what are they wanting to do and um having a more holistic approach and so yeah. the fact that you all were able to do that from the beginning i think helps helps it succeed in a true collaboration between the disciplines yeah i think um when we created taiga which is agile project management we developed it in a way to for developers to make it exciting for designers to go into agile right to do this scrum mm -hmm. and kanban and this iterative process where there's uncertainty along the way and you cannot just design everything from beginning to end and then finish. This is, this is like evolving all the time. And for a designer, that's tough, 
Okay, so we say, okay, we, we're going to create Tiger to make sure that they enjoy the process, they enjoy the ride, and they get it. This is a little trick, they, they, you know, to welcome them to Agile in a way that they, they can enjoy it, really. Mm -hmm. With PenPod, we are doing like the reverse. We are making sure that designers can welcome uh, developers to the design process, um, respect it, you know, appreciate it, and be part of it. And so it's, it's nice, um, like, symmetry there between the two tools that we have um but it comes from uh, it comes out of respect from 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 the other or the type of mindset right um and so we hope that with uh tiger but in this case that we're focusing on penpot um people will not only have a great open source design tool but also see the potential for that conversation between design and code to be more 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 productive, more insightful, more fun. And we cannot have that ruled by non-open source software. You know, we mm -hmm. believe this is this is it's going to be big for this next decade. And we cannot have open source lagging behind. We have to provide the tool set uh, for that and not just keep developing the, the next framework, you know, the next database, the next messaging system, the next low level kernel mm -hmm. and i come from that since 1996 i know what it's, <laughs> what it's like um and it's about time that we go to the non-technical end user tool that enables great processes to happen in a in a team and an open source knows a lot about teams so it's not like a new concept it's just that we have to open up what a team means uh but once we get yeah. that it's going to feel natural Absolutely. Hallelujah. I am here for all of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very exciting. Great. Well, I think we're, we're about at time. Is there um, anything else that you want to say about, um, share with the listeners about Penpot, Taiga, Kaleidos that we haven't touched upon before we wrap things up? I think uh, the only thing is that, uh, Kaleidos is, is, a, is, a, is a nice bunch of people, uh, strong values, uh, strong culture about open source, sharing, generosity, and, and open source, of course. Uh, we, are, we are committed to this. We have some funding, but most importantly, we have ourselves, you know, and our passion and our talent. And um, we're here for the long term, and we expect uh, big news this year, but... but but, but also next year, like next year, 2022 should be for us, um, you know, a, a big time, like for, in terms of uh, uh, engagement, in terms of features, in terms of competition. Um, so, so watch, watch, you know, watch what we're doing and ask questions, participate in whatever, if you're into agile and about team processes, and all that, just take a look at Tiger. If you're into design process and, and, and bridging that gap between design and code, just go for Penpot. You can go for both, of course. Um, and, um, and yeah, you know, follow on social networks and all that. Be very open and transparent about <laughs> what we're doing, dead diaries and all that. Uh, Same yeah. as a small team, but uh, we, 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 will, we have quality time to devote to, to the community and people coming to us respectfully, you know, um, you know, once you contribute, give, give feedback, uh, whether it's reporting a bug, uh, translating something or suggesting a, a feature. And so, so yeah, no, I think, I think it's just hope you're excited as we are about all this. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yeah, well, you, you're off to a great start with Penpot and Taiga is an excellent project already. And the, the the big shift to your business model at Kaleidos is exciting to be able to pour even more attention and energy into things. So I really appreciate you coming, coming on and, and chatting about all things open source and design and sustainability. There's a lot, lot here that we unpack together. Yeah, that was great. I enjoyed the interview a lot, or the conversation rather. So thank you very much for that first impressions video, Clayton. We really enjoyed it. And I also <laughs> enjoyed this uh, great hour uh, together here. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.